Beam car makers being forced to ration the sale of petrol and hybrid vehicles to avoid hefty net zero fines as consumer demand for expensive electric cars continues to wane. So according to one of the country's biggest dealerships chains, this means someone ordering a car today at some dealerships will not receive it until February. It's a long old wait, isn't it, for your new banger? Let's speak to Harry Wilkinson, head of policy at Net Zero Watch. What's going on here, Harry? Uh, more confusing in the EV world. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, this all relates to what's known as the zero emissions vehicle mandate. Now, that sets a target uh, for EV sales of 22%. Uh, this year. So that's all the sales that a outlet, uh, all the cars that they sell, 22% of those have to be electric vehicles. This was a policy that when it was being debated in the Houses of Parliament, uh, we actually, and Net Zero Watch, warned about the impact uh, it would have. We warned that it could only leave uh, consumers worse off. If EVs are really as great as the government was then saying, mm. then why would people need to be compelled uh, to buy them? The best case scenario uh, is that, you know, people would have bought them anyway and there would be no difference to the, the outcome. Uh, but, of course, all the other outcomes is that actually people would have chosen uh, not to buy EVs and therefore they're being maybe delayed in when they can buy them. I think that's how the industry is, is working around this. But this will inevitably constrain the size of the car market. Uh, and then on top of that, it doesn't look like uh, the car manufacturers will actually hit uh, their target in this year so we could see fines on top of this and all this is doing a lot of economic damage the chancellor recently uh, hinted that she was going to raise fuel duty we've got ULES just expanded in london cars are actually really important to the economic growth of this country sure. uh, but we're seeing this war on ordinary motorists uh, just being waged with increasing viciousness is there i mean whatever people think of net zero uh, the idea of driving an electric car, many, I've heard many commentators say, well, it, it's probably better to have an electric car than, a, than a, a petrol or diesel car, ultimately. It's better for the environment, it's, it's better all round, and it's cheaper as well at the moment. Is that a fair argument? Um, well, I wouldn't say it was cheaper. We do see the, the prices of e new EVs, even though they're being sold at a discount because the manufacturers have to sell more mm. of them thanks to this target, they still tend to have a higher uh, price tag on them. In terms of the environment, they're lower in terms of their CO2 emissions, yes, but they have a huge mineral footprint uh, in terms of the batteries and their their greater weight so there's a lot more mining associated with the production of an electric vehicle yeah. there's also you know greater uh, tire wear and brake wear which may sound insignificant but actually it's an increasingly important cause of uh, road pollution that we see on the because of the weight of the today. car that's right and it will of course cause more wear on our roads which will have to be repaired and that will yeah. increase the cost uh, of maintaining our road network so there's a whole range of implications when we look at the societal level uh, that i think the government hasn't really uh, taken into account and of course people have these huge range anxieties they want to be able to have a vehicle that can get them where they need to be when they want to be and and the range anxieties and the cost of charging vehicles you know are still big concerns uh, for for voters, for, for for the general public, and I think you know, the government really should focus on doing what it can and doing it well. Sure. And I would say that should be getting the cost of electricity down. You know, that I, should I would, be. I would agree with that, and, and also the infrastructure. And then EVs would be more affordable. That, that's true, and, and Harry, the infrastructure around. Um, it's charging points uh, and the like, which is you know, woeful, really, in terms of the aim that apparently governments are going for. Previous caller said, don't worry, it will catch up as more people buy electric cars. But I was arguing earlier that, you know, this needs to be a sort of an engineering project up there with HS2 in terms of getting it ready so that, you know, the, what they want the entire nation in electric cars, that we, we need to have much more in terms of infrastructure if that was to happen. Well, certainly, if we want to meet these ambitious targets, there would have to be a lot more 
uh, infrastructure, but that will be incredibly expensive and we're all going to pay the price uh, for that. The beautiful thing about a free market is it's actually you have outcomes which are reflective of what people want. And, and this is pushing increasingly against the grain yeah. um, of what consumers want. You know, when, when the motor car came out uh, in the last century, you didn't have to have governments, you know, subsidizing the production of uh, petrol stations wherever they need to be. Sure. And, and create. A lot of this happened organically because actually car companies, you know, wanted to sell vehicles, wanted to help subsidize the the uh, infrastructure that was involved. If, if companies want to sell electric cars, you know, perhaps they should be the ones providing the infrastructure for that. Yeah. Spot on. Harry, thank you. Harry Wilkinson, head of policy at Net Zero Watch, a little cautious about the EV revolution. But revolution it is. Um, and there is no doubt about it. I mean, my own thought on what is happening with the, the kind of world we're living in, with uh, whether it's net zero in, in the sense of cars, whether it's heating our houses, uh, that these windmills that are going up all over the place, labour opening the door for more people to build that stuff. There's so much w that doesn't quite make sense about it. Now, I'm willing to believe, because I'm not a stupid bloke, if somebody wants to convince me, and I don't come at this from a, uh, you know, they've made it up, mate, they've made it all up. I don't believe that in that sense. But I do believe that something weird is happening in, in, in a lack of information. And what I, what I, my sense of this is is that this is almost about manufacturing a fourth industrial revolution. Because without one, industry is going to stumble. We've got AI coming in. We have quantum com uh, computing and um, 3D printing, uh, artificial intelligence. You put all of that together, the entire... Um, spectrum of the workplace is going to be unrecognisable, OK, as more and more things default to things like artificial intelligence and all the various other bits of technological advancements that have made so much redundant and increasingly will make individuals redundant on a scale we have never seen. It won't be like the internet where people thought, oh, everyone's going to lose their job. Actually, the internet created loads of jobs. Uh, those that work in AI and connected areas say, actually, do you know what? It, it's not going to be like that. There won't be replacement. There won't need to be replacement jobs. D that is not required. You know, there are some radio stations whose travel news is read by AI. Did you know that, man? Somebody told me about this, and I was listening the other day, and I heard the travel announcer say, and there's a problem in St Albans. And I thought, St Albans? That's a bit weird. It's not one of those names that you can pronounce wrong because everyone knows St Albans. And I thought, ah, it's the AI travel announcer. That's just one example. In my own industry, there are many others, uh, by the way. Um, so, yeah, it's going to, so, so you need something to almost create jobs that weren't there before. And a massive revolution on panels and windmills and cars and heating and pumps and construction and all that goes with it. it that's what I think is going on here. I think this is about, because without it, we've got a, a, a whole different problem to, to face. I think it's a conspiracy theory that somebody's saying, ah, if we get everybody onto this thing, we can then control you and how much where you can go and how much you can... It's not about that. They, if they can make money out of you, they don't give a hoot how far you can go. Paper mile might come in, not to monitor you, but to raise money because they, they're skint in the motor industry. The government are skint from the motor industry because of a lack of road tax that is paid on things like EVs. So there's a massive problem in that respect. So that's, that's my reading of it, not to suggest there isn't uh, climate change. We all know there's climate change. Are we all going to drop dead in the next couple of decades and all the little animals? Imagine a world without a ferret. I mean, that doesn't bear thinking about, does it? We all love a ferret. An orangutan, for example, those cheeky little ginger merchants. An orangutan, imagine a world without... I don't want to see a world without these beasts. They're fantastic. So I don't think, it, I don't think we're all going to die. And I think if we were all going to die, we'd have a kind of COVID-like response to it that would be better than, you know, if you want to put a solar panel up, go for it. It wouldn't be optional in this respect. Much more would be going on. But... 
there is a lot going on and it's going on in a way that I sense is more about commerce than it is about the environment. It's more about construction, it's more about economics than it is really about net zero. And of course, if you can live, who doesn't want to live in a cleaner world? It's like asking, do you want to live in a kinder world or an unkind world? Oh, I'd like, quite like the kind world, please. Uh, you want people to be nice or horrible old gits? No, I'll go for nice. Do you want to live in a place that's cleaner or less clean? Well, no, I'll go for the clean. Of course we do. Everybody wants a little bit of that. But it's the parallel message of absolute doom destruction and the death cult that is the net zero evan evangelist that I think is disturbing for many people because it comes without any sense of credible evidence. And I don't mean the science isn't there to back up climate change. I'm talking about the evidence of our response, which I think would be a bit more... We wouldn't be flogging four by fours in garages right now if we're all about to die. Let's look at it that way. And Sadiq Khan wouldn't be giving people the option of paying £12.50. Pollute as much as you like as long as you pay for it. That's just cobblers, right?